So in this uh, eighth video of the series, I thought I'd talk about, having talked about uh, networking and wide FS in the last um, video, I thought I'd talk about, uh, I'll begin to talk about programs that um, link across the network. And in this case, um, ATC programs and um, my experience with them and what my choice of a better program, I think amongst a bunch is. <laughs> So, as I said, I'm going to talk about um, linking across the network and um, ATC, air traffic control uh, programs. So, I have tried um, a number of different programs, and this really is a matter of, um, of personal choice. And they are very different, and they offer very different capabilities. In, in pretty much all the sims now, they've really moved on, so the um, basic inbuilt, air traffic control is actually quite intuitive and quite informative and quite usable. So you might not want to consider at all any additional programs, but additional programs can add real uh, value, going back to that immersion question and, um, and more functionality. So I've tried quite a few um, air traffic control programs. So I've tried um, radar contact, uh, Pro Flight 3, Pilot um, 2 ATC, uh, Vox ATC, Real ATC, and Pro ATC. Um, the thing that can differentiate them primarily is some are uh, they activate they're activated by voice recognition, so that you can actually talk to them. Um, some are activated just by uh, key presses or selecting particular numbers on the menu. So the two that are natively um, voice um, activated um, is Vox, AC, Vox ATC and uh, Pilot 2 ATC. A couple of the others you can access through voice. So uh, ProFlight 3, I, I actually don't think that's been developed anymore from what I could gather from the website, but um, ProFlight three and um, pro ATC, they can be activated using a multi crew experience, a separate utility, but I found that really to be a little bit, um, frankly, too complicated. And there are other voice activated utilities that you can use, but they are really, I think, quite tortuous, um, quite tortuous to use. So for a long time, um, my favorite was uh, Pro ATC. It's pretty stable. It's easily um, configured. I thought that the the options for selecting particular aircraft, particular flights, um, was actually quite quite useful. And my um, my advice would be, if you're like me in the UK, you can download the UK enhancement for that and additional voices, which really increase. Um, the functionality and um, and the realism. The only thing I found was a little bit frustrating about it. It seems to be, in my opinion, more uh, functional for airliners and um, larger jets than for general aviation aircraft that I tend um, to fly. So I have now migrated over to um, or back to Pilot. To ATC, that is by far my favourite program. Now that's the program that I keep uh, coming back to. You can run that on the main simulator um, uh, computer, or in my case, I run it on uh, a secondary client computer. It connects really, really well, just using a wide FS that we mentioned in the uh, in the last um, in the last video. So we can also configure um, a push to talk button um, across the network and I'll talk about that a little bit uh, later on. So first off, here's a little bit of a run through, an introduction to the program itself, to the menus and to how you might uh, set up um, a flight uh, within the program. 
So here you can see on the main screen, if you just click on config on the right, the first tab is uh, the main P uh, part to ATC setup. Lots of different interfaces in terms of avionics. I selected General Aviation, Piper Tomahawk and Kilo Sierra Yankee in the call sign. Uh, you don't really need to change any other of the settings here and your license details will be at the bottom. The next tab, ATC settings. Again, not much to change on here, although I prefer Pilot to ACC to do the ATIS. And um, on the third tab, you can select the source for background chatter. Now you can download this ATC chatter as a separate program, drop it into the folder and select the controller folder at the top. You don't need to put anything else in these other folder settings and you can select the time in between uh, when the background chatter files are run. And at the bottom here, there are a couple of files to select which give some hiss and background, just some immersion for um, the voice. It works with uh, the Microsoft Windows normal voices, but in my opinion, it's worth investing. They're a bit expensive in the Sepstral and or the Ionia voices. They give you more choice. You can choose the different voices for the different uh, controllers. You can set the speed and uh, the volume. Here you set the primary uh, sound driver. I would suggest you just keep that as standard because it can be a bit picky if you select different drivers. And there are various options in order to install and import flight plans to connect to what weather programs you might have. And finally, and importantly on the buttons, so I've got Shift A um, selected as the push to talk button and mouse zero. And I'll talk a bit later about how you can connect over the network a button on your joystick to allow you to select Shift A as the push to talk. So to set up a new flight, um, you just need to check that you've got the right aircraft selected, the aircraft that you want to fly. It's much easier if you connect to the simulator, so press connect. And if it's successful, you'll see the, um, the comms frequencies light up and the connect tab goes green and a little aircraft will appear in the home air airport on the map. I select a VFR, uh, click new, and then the first thing you need to do is select the airport you're going to take off from. So in this case it's um, Liverpool Airport, EGGP, select that. Now you can and put in uh, VORs and um, various uh, waypoints if you choose um, simply by connecting and selecting the buttons at the bottom here. So for example you could uh, pick the um, the Wallacey uh, VOR. Um, if you click you see it appears. I think if we're just going to uh, show for an example a circuit so you can right click select a user defined waypoint along each of the elements of the route so we come across the the base leg and as we turn to final we want to put in the airport which will be our destination so again it's Liverpool and that will put in the approach um, to Liverpool and uh, you can see the settings at the top here. The flight is 1,500 because that's within the Liverpool controlled area. You can press, press auto plan and that will put in a lot of different uh, waypoints along the route. You can also uh, select SID or STAR. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to select an approach. So it offers you the approaches that are available. We're coming into runway 027 to Liverpool. So if we look at what approaches are available for runway 027, there are three. Um, if you select them on here, it'll um, depict them on the, uh, on the map. Uh, we're going to select a straight in approach to runway 27. So we select that approach, just press load. Uh, that puts the approach onto the um, map, into the uh, flight plan. 
and we're good to go we uh, select validate now validate will check now in this case because um, we haven't got enough height at the particular waypoint um, UV E R I then it's not allowed you to validate so we need to go back we need to select the minimum height that we need to be at when we pass by that waypoint which is 2000 feet uh, select and now when we go to um, file the plan it will allow us to file and the filing will go green and once you've got those two buttons green then you're connected to your simulator and you will see the uh, frequencies appear in the simulator that's pretty much it for the uh, setup right, I said I'd come back to the um, across the network functionality for the push to talk button so there are a couple of things you can do in the INI file for WideFS so the first thing is you can actually automatically start WideFS um, and pilot to ATC uh, together by using a simple run command in fact you can you can start as many programs simultaneously uh, with a WideFS as you wish just using simultaneous run one run two run three commands and here you can see the run one command is pointed to uh, pilot to uh, ATC. So I said I would talk about the pressed to talk function. So back in the main simulator, FSU IPC, um, we can select the button, select the uh, simulator control to be sent. And in the first box, when the key is pressed, we just simply select key send and then the parameter here uh, will be one. And in the lower box, uh, the function to be sent when the key is released. Again, we select uh, key send. In this case, the parameter uh, we will select is two. Then back to the uh, client PC, the INI file in the user section. If you look in the manual, there are various numbers that identify the shift control, etc. And the letter to be uh, sent or released and this can then trigger the control, in this case shift A, that you set up as the push to talk button in Pilot to ATC. There are a couple of things that you probably need to think about as well. So I have the Pilot to ATC functionality on the client PC. The problem with that is that um, it's tricky if you want to hear it in your headphones. So I think I said in one of the earlier videos, I've got the Astro A50 wireless headphones. So I've got the USB for the Astros plugged into the client PC. And then the main digital out from the simulator for the sound from the simulator um, straight into the uh, wireless sender. So I can get both when I'm when I'm flying outside VR, I can get both the uh, main simulator sound and the ATC sound into the Astro uh, A50s. I think that's a really simple solution. It works really, really well um, Well for me. I, um, You can also use the mic for the Astros in that scenario. If you're flying VR, it gets a bit more complicated because, um, because obviously I'm not using the Astros. I'm, in my case, I use the Vive. So you need to use a separate facility and I use uh, Airfoil. So Airfoil is um, is a send over the network facility that sends the sound from the uh, client PC to the simulator PC. There are two halves to the program, a sender and a receiver. You simply open them on um, each network, set up the, um, the uh, license and set up the details of which PC is receiving and which is sending and you will then be able to hear the sound from the client PC in your headphones or in the VR on the main simulator. I think that's it. So um, here's a little bit of, um, of a demonstration about how and what you need to watch out for uh, when you're in the cockpit and you're running um, Pilot to ATC. So you need to make sure the avionics power is on in the aircraft 
and it will default to the ATIS for the um, for the airport. Eight twenty Zulu winds are zero six one at six knots. Two thousand four hundred broken. Temperature nine. Dew point six. Current QNH is one zero one zero. Arriving and departing runway zero nine. Liverpool information Charlie, 820 Zulu winds are 061 at 6 knots, 2400. So you need to select the frequency for the airport that you're at, in this case 121 decibel 905 for Liverpool okay. Airport, and make sure you give your call sign before you ask uh, for clearance. Ready to copy. Aircraft calling ground, say again with your call sign. Uh, just to confirm, to hold short here, I'm going to speak, I'm going to Apollo 682, cross runway 16, taxi. So let's try that again, this time with uh, the call sign. Piper Kilo, Sierra Yankee, ready to copy. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee cleared VFR to Echo Golf Golf Papa with radar advisory service at 2,500 feet. Squawk 4026 advise of altitude changes en route. Uh, Apollo 6 to apologies, that's after crossing on 16, Hotel 1, and then link 4 to your Cleared Echo Golf Golf Papa, 2,500 feet, radar advisory en route. Squawking 4026, Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee, read back correct. QNH is 1010, expect runway 09, advise when ready to taxi. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee, request engine start. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee, engine start approved. Minor. Engine start approved, Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee. Clear prop. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee, ready to taxi. Piper Kilo Sierra Yankee, taxi to runway 09 via taxiways Kilo, Alpha, Charlie, hold short runway 09. 09 by Kilo Alpha Charlie Hosha runway 09 by Kilo Sierra Yankee. So I hope that was useful. Um, if you've got any comments or thoughts, um, please leave them uh, below. I'm interested to think, you know, anything that you think that I could uh, maybe do a video on that you would find uh, useful. Any questions that you've um, got, feel free to add them. And if you want to subscribe, I'll be doing um, a few more videos on uh, add-ons and utilities, um, weather programs and what have you uh, in, uh, in future videos. So that's all for today and uh, thank you for watching.